Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to my channel, man. I'm so grateful and so glad that you all are choosing to tune in uh, for this particular session. And um, today I want to talk about something very um, personal, but maybe as I kind of expose my personal, uh, it'll help you deal with yours. And this is called I Sabotage Everything Good. I don't know about you, but um, I have come to realize that self-sabotage is a real thing. You know, uh, a lot of times we're so fearful that something could be right that we will probably go out of our way to make it wrong. One of my things that I'm coming to the realization of is that we are responsible for what we feel. And, you know, we say all the time, well, somebody made me feel this way. Somebody made me feel this way. Somebody made me feel this way. But a lot of times when we say that, what we're saying is they presented us the opportunity to feel that way. And we accepted the opportunity to feel that way. No one can make you feel any type of way. They could present you with the opportunity for you to feel that way. And then you accept that opportunity. And then, you, then therefore, you feel that way, right? So um, I began to do inventory, like, you know, um, what good things were going on in my life or what things were going in the right direction that I began to self-sabotage or I began to nitpick and find something wrong with it. Um, and maybe, you know, it started in relationships or maybe it started with, you know, situations with my father. Maybe it started uh, with family, whatever it may be. But I realized that it became a pattern for me that I would start to find anything wrong. And um, I'm also realizing that I'm afraid of being vulnerable. This is a big one. And this is why we self-sabotage is because we don't like to be vulnerable. We, vulnerable. we don't like to be open. We don't like to be transparent. And at some point we have to ask ourselves again, where did this start? A lot of times we have to dig back into past emotions and past feelings. And one of the things that I realized with me is that I lost the, um, I'm not going to say the ability because I think I still have the ability, but I lost um, the feelings of being open and transparent with the individual. This, this is what's amazing about me. And this is dysfunctional, right? But this is what's amazing about, about me is that I could probably be more open to a camera and more open in a room full of people with 2000 people listening to me speak. I could be more open and transparent with them than I can be in a one-on-one -on -one conversation with someone. Um, I realized that I was shutting down and I realized that it played a part and me not being vulnerable. And so these two components, the lack of wanting to be vulnerable or the lack of being transparent in one-on-one -on -one conversations led to me self-sabotaging everything that looked or seemed good. Have you ever been to that place where you was like, you know, uh, this is going good, but then you start thinking about how bad it could become? And you can't even enjoy like the real, like the moment, like the moment is like you're in the middle of a moment. The moment is great. You're just having a great time. And then you're just thinking, how long is this going to last? <laughs> you know, you start, you start trying to figure out like, is this really this good? Or am I just tripping right now? You know, and you start looking for ways or things to be wrong. And we will try to figure out ways to sabotage anything that's going well. I realized that I was finding anything wrong with, uh, with friendships, with platonic male-female friendships, with male-male friendships, with brotherhoods. I would sabotage and find anything to be wrong. And I would search for those things to be wrong. And then I had to look at the reason why I would search for things to be wrong. I would search for things to be wrong because I didn't like the, pl to the point of vulnerability. Because in any friendship, relationship, business, whatever it may be, there's going to be a moment where you have to be at some shape, form or fashion vulnerable, whether that's vulnerability with your money, you know, like when you are getting ready to purchase a home. Um, if you have never purchased a home before, when they start asking for all your bank records and three months of bank statements and stuff like that, that's called vulnerability. You're opening up because there is something that you're trying to get on the other side of this. And then you share all of your information they nitpick everything that you didn't purchase and then you start really have you ever looked at your bank account and saw how much money you spent on food like th that was the first time like i looked at it they put out those three months and i started calculating up wendy's chick-fil-a uh <laughs> I, guess the, I was like you know what if i just really stop eating out then i really could have a lot of i could really could have a lot more money i really really could but um but yeah, it's, it's a level of vulnerability because there's something that you're trying to achieve on the other side of it. But I would look for ways to sabotage it. I remember when I was closing on my first home, 
that, um, you know, they tell you don't purchase anything, don't make any big purchases, don't pull your credit, don't do any of that during this home process. And the moment they pushed my close date back uh, 30 more days, I got so mad I went and I traded in my Jeep and got a Dodge Challenger. I never forget it because I did it personally because I was like, you're not going to control me. It was it was I be I tried to sabotage me buying my first home and. Even when I tried to sabotage it, it still didn't work. It, it just didn't work because I tried to sabotage it. I got a new car. I thought that was going to pull my credit and I thought it was going to show up. And then, and then my debt to income ratio was going to be different and blah, 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 blah. No, my debt to income ratio stayed the same because my car payments were just the same. When they pulled my credit, because my credit was pretty good at that time and it's better now, but they did a, for some reason, they didn't even do a hard pull. They did a soft pull just to pull my numbers. It just still worked out in my favor. And I still was trying to sabotage it and um, ended up not sabotaging. It, and I ended up closing on my home 30 days later, my first home 30 days later. And two years later, I bought my second home and, um, and things of that nature. But I'm saying that to say that for everything good um, that is happening in your life, don't look for ways to sabotage it because you're afraid at some point you're going to have to be vulnerable. At some point in your life, you're going to have to be vulnerable. At some crossroads, you're going to have to be open and you're going to have to share. And hopefully you will have people in your corner that don't try to force you to spaces that you are not ready to go. And when I say that, I mean that they begin to allow you to be you without feeling like they're trying to force you to change you to be who they want you to become. And, um, you know, by the grace of God, I've had friendships and great business partners that allow me to open up at my own pace, but also at the same time continue to challenge me and my level of growth and hold me accountable to the things that I said that I desire to do. So um, as it pertains to relationships or whatever it may be, I would, you know, I just, just chosen that, yo, I'm putting that on hold till I begin to process my own growth as it pertains to me not wanting to sabotage everything that's good. And that's okay. Because when something good comes into your life, you don't want to hurt someone else because you're trying to pretend that you are ready for something that you know that you're not. And that's where hearts are broken. And that's where people are upset. Or that's where, you know, um, things go, things go drastically wrong because we're trying to be something that we know that we're not all for the sake of everybody telling us that you should be ready for this by now. You know, you're at this age, you should be ready for this by now, but your wounds could say something different. Your experience and your memory and your heartbreak and your, your mind could be saying something totally different. So, um, I was challenged by this because, uh, my sister, Christabel Clack, uh, who I'm very, very close to, um, and she's married to one of the closest guys in my life. But me and Christopher have our own relationship and me and Brandon Clack have our own relationship and I have my relationship with them together. But um, we were sitting at, in their house and we were talking about soulmates. And uh, I was like, well, obviously I haven't met my soulmate yet. You know, obviously I'm not married and da 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 da. And then Christabel looks at me. She looked at me and she looked at me very intently. And she said, I think you have. I just think that you have just, you just specialize in self-sabotage. <gasps> it struck me in my heart. Like I was like, <gasps> you know, or somebody like punch you in the gut, suck, or like take all the wind out of you. That's literally what it felt like. And I was like, no, I immediately went on the defense trying to defend myself. No, I do not. But then I began to think about it. And I began to think about me not wanting to be vulnerable in one-on-one -on -one situations. Then I began to think about all the times that I have been uh, if I'm truthful, that I've been verbally abused by people wanting me to be a certain type of way. And because I'm not, they try to create a narrative or whatever for me to become that. I looked at um, me dealing with the avenue of people pleasing because in certain aspects of my life, um, I have kept doors open that I didn't shut because I did not want to be looked at as the bad guy. Um, and I didn't want to be looked at as if, you know, uh, I'm so wrong or, you know, in somebody's story, you're going to be the bad person. I wish I could just tell you everybody's going to love you and everything's going to be good. But in somebody's story, whether it's family, friends, business, whatever, somebody's going to paint you to be a bad person. And you got to be OK with that because you got to remember who you are. You know, you're not going to be able to make everybody happy. And because my issue with people pleasing, 
I would try to sabotage something with the hopes that it doesn't get to that point where they begin to, you know, care for me so much and then I gotta make them mad or whatever. I, I just don't know. I just don't know. I just, you know, and really this video doesn't have like a big grandiose answer to how we can stop self-sabotaging. But I think the number one thing is identify with the pattern in which that you may do it. Yo, I have an issue with self-sabotage. I search for things to be wrong. And then find out why you search for things to be wrong. And not look at everybody else, look at yourself. I search for things to be wrong because maybe I don't like to be vulnerable. Or maybe I don't like people in my space like that. Or maybe I just have just chosen, yo, I just wanna be by myself for this season of my life. And that's okay. And so um, it's identifying with the fact that you do it and it's identifying with maybe why you do it. It's almost like where somebody will come up on you and you begin to flinch. Like, why, why do you do that? Somebody comes and they, they're moving and then they go to hug you and you flinch. It's because somewhere before then, maybe just maybe somebody hit you or they, they were abusive. Um, I learned this with my dogs. I have two, um, well, I have three dogs, but uh, my two bro the, the two brothers, Carson and Hamilton, um, they were abused. They were abused when I got them. I got them when they were puppies. And Carson is the stronger one. Hamilton flinches. So if you move, if you move too fast with Hamilton, he's going to flinch. He's going to move because he has a pattern in his past that when somebody came towards him, they were coming towards him to hit him. So I move slow with Hamilton. I approach him slow, but he's the most affectionate. If I'm rubbing, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm, you know, rubbing Carson, he's going to come over and he's going to wait his turn, but then he's going to jump up on me and he's going to put his, 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 his front paws on me because he wants me to embrace him. He wants me to pick him up. He wants to sit in my lap. And that's the thing. Majority of the time, the people that are flinching the most really want the most love, but because they haven't been programmed that way. They don't know how to tell you that and they don't know how to open up about that. And so what they'll settle for doing is sabotaging it with the hopes that you will, you know, not love them. Uh, we will also in self-sabotage, like find something that's wrong within other people or find something wrong within the situation, but also find something wrong within ourselves. So we'll look at ourselves, say, I'm not right. I'm wrong. I'm messed up. I'm jacked up. Don't love me don't care for me don't listen don't do it that's what we'll do right there like find something in ourselves to say mm -mm, i'm not worthy of that because we're looking at a way for us to sabotage the perception that you have of us because maybe you think that we're amazing but we know us and so we're saying no i'm not now let me tell you how messed up i really am and then it's with the hopes that you just come to a place you say i, I can't do this and we'll be like, okay, great. <laughs> I know it's so dysfunctional, but it's, but it's our reality for some of us. And for some of you that are absolutely perfect, and this is not for you, you probably cut this video off already, so you haven't made it this far. But I just want to tell you congratulations on your perfection. Uh, but for a few of us, we are trying to perfect this self-sabotage thing. So thank you guys for uh, tuning in to this. Um, I really don't have... Like I said, you know, like something to tell you, like, yo, do this, do this, do this, but identify with it, find out what's the root cause behind it, and then also find out what's your language that you are constantly saying to try to repel the love that you may want, need, or the business that you may want, need, or the friendship you may want, need. And I give you this for free. The next one you gotta pay me for. Everybody that comes into your life is not there for a romantic relationship. Everybody's not. So we immediately go to that category when it's opposite sex or um, maybe even same sex situations, whatever it may be. We immediately go to, oh, this person and we're gonna be with this person and this person's amazing. You can encounter amazing people that you're just going to be friends with. And that is okay. There's nothing wrong with that. And I don't know why we got to feel like immediately as soon as we meet somebody, like, oh my God, that's my man. That's my husband. That's my wife. Da, da, da. No, that could just be your friend. And let that be that and be okay with it. So I just wanted to tell you guys that. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you subscribe, like, and ring that bell so you can get the notifications when I post. And uh, yeah, and I can't wait to see you soon. All right.
Talk to you guys soon.